What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Richie Sky. We are back with another video. Sky Squad, you know what's up. We in the building. Yes, coming back with another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about Real Housewives of Atlanta. We've got some tea. The Real Housewives of Atlanta producers are spilling the tea on what it was actually like filming with uh, Mark Daly and Kenya Moore. Get into that. And then we got Dr. Heavenly responding to those accusations that Miss Mariah had put out last week. So we're gonna be discussing that as well. So stick around until the very end. Don't miss a single drip drop of this that we are about to get into today, okay? Uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button so that you can stay clued into when we drop new content on this channel. Also feel free to join the texting community where I text you as soon as a new video drops, okay? So first things first, let's get into this Kenya Moore and Mark Daly situation, okay? Now you guys know Kenya and Mark was on the verge of divorce. Then somewhere along the way, quarantine happened and then the reunion happened. And you know, she made it seem like they was trying to work things out even though they in two different places and spaces with no contact looking like it's coming up in sight, okay? Well, let's get into what the producers had to say about their time filming with the two of them, and they're pulling back the curtain and letting us know what it was really like. Get into this, okay? Now, the producers are saying, okay, and this was during an enhanced version of season 12, episode 16, which originally aired on June 7th, that Kenya never tried to put a positive spin on her marriage. They said that she was very open and honest about what was going on. They also said that they could tell things were rocky between Kenya and Mark upon her return to the Real Housewives of Atlanta this past season. They said it only got progressively worse as we continued filming. And I'm like, well, duh. Okay, so then they said this. They admitted that they never really saw Kenya and Mark argue while filming. It was clear in our opinion, they said, that they just didn't get along. Then they added that it was definitely uncomfortable every time they filmed with the couple. Now, according to the producers, Mark seemed to be in a, quote, weird mood when he arrived at his charity event for the Black Man Lab in that particular episode. Cynthia and Eva also could sense some tension between Kenya and, and Mark at that event as well, is what the producers were saying. Then they also said that they were sad to see how things developed for the couple during the season. They said, we knew how much Kenya wanted her marriage to work, okay? Um, now, just to give you guys the update and as a reminder, okay, on the reunion, Kenya indicated that we're working on it, we're in counseling, and Mark made a complete 180. He just seems like he's fighting for his family and that's all I ever wanted him to do. I had blocked him. Then he started to ask to speak with me and send emails and just became more humble in the relationship. And he just basically said he really wants to work on it. Um, Y'all know how I feel about this situation. Uh, to me, I feel like, you know, he embarrassed her on national television. I know that a lot of people feel like, oh, well, she got what she deserved or whatever like that because of things that she's done to other people on the show. I, 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 I guess I just feel like this, you know, I'm separating her issues with some of the other cast members from her relationship because I just feel like they are two separate things. Um, I, I do feel like he mistreated her. That's the bottom line. If she want to take him back, by all means, go ahead and do what makes you happy, girl. But at the end of the day, it takes longer than a couple of months for a leopard to change their spots if they change them at all, okay? So beware of that, okay? And beware of the fact that this man is not even around you right now for you to really test his durability, his newfound durability in this relationship. Because honestly, y'all ain't never lived in the same household. You know what I'm saying? How you gonna make this marriage work and y'all ain't even in the same state? Y'all ain't even in the same city. Y'all can't even be in the same bed at night. You know what I'm saying? That level of intimacy, that level of, 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 of connectivity and being around each other is really what I feel like is the test of a good marriage or not. You know what I'm saying? Can you withstand, you know, being around this person 24 seven? And if you can't, you know, then you know that this is not somebody that you need to be with. 
And they ain't even had that opportunity to have that sort of situation happen in their relationship for her to know whether or not this is going to be solid or not. You know what I'm saying? For all she know, he could be running around up in New York in quarantine with somebody else. She just don't know. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that he is. I'm just saying she would have no idea what he's doing up there other than what he tells her. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I just don't see it. Y'all can comment down below. Let me know what you think. Um, but we're going to be moving right on along to Dr. Heavenly and this whole situation with that good Mariah. Now, you guys know last week I told you that Mariah has said that she may be suing the network, or excuse me, not the network, the production company, Purveyors of Pop, because of all of the, um, what I'm interpreting as clear discrimination and discriminatory tactics, okay? Now, uh, Mariah did a great interview with our friends over at allaboutthetea.com. You guys can check that out as well. She also did an interview with uh, our friends over at the Jasmine brand. This is where she first indicated that she may sue them, but she also goes into more detail about, you know, the elements and uh, of discrimination that she faced at the hands of the production company in this interview with All About The Tea. Again, I will link that down below so you guys can watch that for yourself for some additional information on this whole Mariah situation. Uh, I was supposed to be uh, in interviewing her, but I haven't heard back from her yet. So as soon as that comes about, we'll be able to ask her some direct questions uh, with regards to the situation at hand. Now, we have Dr. Heavenly finally speaking out about what Mariah had to say about the production company. And Dr. Heavenly is talking about Buffy Purcell not coming back and sort of uh, connecting the dots between why Buffy and Dr. Simone are no longer friends. Get into all of this, okay? Now, Dr. Heavenly says this on her YouTube page. She said, when a subscriber asked how she felt about Buffy and Simone, not being friends anymore. Heavenly said, yeah, it was fake. She ain't know that girl. Then you don't take up for a B that you know, and you know you wrong for your best friend. So I'm assuming she's saying you take enough for, Doc, for Buffy, who you don't know, but she's going against your best friend who you do know for years. She said, don't that make you feel some kind of way? Jackie been your best friend for 20 doggone years and you gonna take this B side knowing Jackie didn't mean nothing when she said you were infertile? They cut it up, I'm telling you. The girl wouldn't have did that. Look at the previous. Jackie is very about her image. I've talked about this. Jackie is about her image. She then said, she said it, but they cut it off. It wasn't like that, I'm telling you, and Simone knew it, okay? Now y'all know Buffy is not coming back. In a previous video, I had told you guys about how Buffy had said that she and Simone no longer spoke and that Simone had also indicated on social media that Buffy no longer returned her text messages. That's very interesting to me. We'll touch on that in just a second. Well, actually let's touch on it now because to be quite honest with you, that does that's, that has got to make you feel rather crazy, okay? If you Dr. Simone and you run around here defending somebody that you don't even barely know that well, especially knowing that if it was cut up in that way, we wouldn't know it, but Simone would have known it and she was there. To me, that sounds like Simone doing some flip flopperization. You know what I'm saying? And I don't really like that because I feel like you need to be ride or die with your real friends. You cannot let this TV thing, you know, get you off of your game and take you off of, you know, what you know to be new, uh, good and true. And that's real friendship. OK, now, whether or not this really exposed, I know a lot of people felt like it exposed Dr. Jackie for who she really is, because we got to see a side of her specifically when, you know, um, trying to apologize to Buffy or, or rather not trying to apologize to her. We got to see a side of her that we don't necessarily normally see. But at the end of the day, I do feel like, you know, you rock with the people that rock with you. That's it. Okay. So then Heavenly addresses Mariah's accusations. Okay. They asked if it was true that Mariah wasn't allowed to wear a hijab while filming green screen interviews. This is what Dr. Heavenly said. She says, I don't know how true that is. Now, I ain't gonna say nothing about the girl because I don't want to speak her up, but a lot of lies is mixed with the truth. Some of that ish is true, but a lot of that ish is mixed up with that. We all black on the show. We all black. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay? 
Uh, so, Dr. Heavenly, you know, to be quite honest with you, I feel like I agree with what Dr. Heavenly says to a certain extent, right? The truth is usually mixed in, in between this person's story and this person's story, and then the truth usually lies somewhere in betwixt, right? But I am a Mariah sympathizer in the sense that I do feel like Mariah contributes a lot to this show. Dr. Heavenly and Mariah's fights are epic, okay? They make the show great a lot of the times because I don't know where the stuff that they come up with comes from, but the stuff be entertaining, okay? So to me, I'm all for Mariah making a comeback, specifically if, you know, if she, as one of the creators of the show, to me, it just makes sense. You know what I'm saying? You don't necessarily do your creators like that. Now, this is what I feel like happened, probably. First season, I felt like Mariah kind of was like doing the Queen Bee sort of sort of thing, right? And I felt like production or something like that, or maybe the ladies wanted to humble her in some type of way. And I feel like that probably happened, but I feel like it went to a, a, a whole new level year after year where I feel like they probably kept reducing her power. I'm not sure, but we'll try to, you know, get the answers from Mariah whenever she responds. And then we will uh, let you guys know exactly what happened, the timeline and all that good stuff. Anyway, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts on these situations down in the comment section below. Make sure you guys hit that uh, notification bell so that you can stay clued into when we drop new content on this channel. And y'all know what's up. I'm going to see you in the next video.